So with that under our belt, we're gonna move into the next part where we start to talk about means and expected values. And if we refer back to that trait table, right, we're just going down the row here, or down the column, right? We, we did the PDF first, now we're hitting means, all right? We're gonna hit standard deviation next. We've talked a little bit about how to calculate probabilities in terms of using Venns, trees, formulas, uh, or it's in the wording of a problem. But we're gonna focus now on this mean and standard deviation. So with that, let me scoot the paper up and we'll start talking about this. Okay, so when you hear me talk about mean or expected value, Right. The mean of a random variable is denoted by mu. We, we've talked about this before, population mean. It describes where the population, excuse me, de describes where the probability distribution is centered. All right. So when you hear expected value, that is another word for mean, which is still another word for average. So we have three vocab terms that mean the same thing, all right? But expected value has its own little symbol. We like to write E of X in it, all right? So E of X and mu, same thing, all right? Here's the formula for how you calculate the expected value. So again, I could have, if I wanted to, I could have called this E of X. All right, so you remember this guy, capital sigma. We're gonna add some stuff and we're gonna add a bunch of products. We're gonna add a bunch of x's times your p of x, right? and we're gonna go through all x values. So we're gonna revisit the, those moms that were getting woken up after their child, or by their child, by their newborn after midnight. I'm gonna do this average. I'm gonna show you how to use this formula, all right, the longer way, and then I wanna show you how you could also get this number on your calculator. So let me move this up just a bit. I want us to still be able to hopefully see the formula right there, and I should have just a little bit of space to do some work. Okay, perfect. So let's, let's try this problem. So we remember this where a child psycholo psychologist is interested in the number of times a newborn baby's crying wakes its mother after midnight. For a random sample of 50 mothers, the following information was obtained, right? Two mothers were not woken up, 11 mothers woken up once, 23 mothers woken up twice, Nine mothers woken up three times, four mothers were woken up, woken up four times, one mom was woken up five times, okay? And we had this PDF. We calculated this all the way back in chapter, or not chapter, example two. We took all of these frequencies and we divided them by 50 to get the relative frequencies. All right, so now I wanna talk about the average. And we can kind of eyeball the average a little bit. If I look at these probabilities, there's a lot of weight right here. I can just feel there's a lot of weight because you can see there's 22% of your data here and 46% of your data here. Right? And there's even 18 here. So I'm feeling like the mean is somewhere in here. All right? Somewhere in that area. But let's use this formula to figure it out. All right. So mu. Here we go. Start with your first x value, but we're going to go through all x values. And we're going to do our x value times our p of x value. So there's a bunch of products. All right, top row of your table, bottom row of your table. So as I start to go through this, my first x value is zero. I'm gonna multiply that against its probability of 0.04. That's my first product. I'm going to add to it my next product, right? I wanna add a bunch of these products. So my next x value, if I go here, it's one. I'm going to multiply that against its probability of 0.22. All right. So I made my second product, right? When I say product, two things multiplied, x times p of x. So there's a product here, there's a product here, and I'm adding all of these products. I am not done with my variable. I also have it was possible that a mom was woken up twice after midnight. But I want to weight that with its probability of 0.46. And then I want to go through and I want to do the product for the moms getting woken up three times, the product for the moms getting woken up four times, and the product for the moms getting woken up five times. Right. 
So I've got a bunch of products in there. And then it's a matter of going to my calculator and figuring out what this, this average is. So now that I've used the formula, I'm gonna just push this up a bit so I have a little bit more room to write. Okay, and let's see how we're doing with this. So let me get my calculator. All right, so I'm gonna do zero times 0.04, and then I'm gonna do plus one times 0.22, all right, plus two, times 0.46, plus 3, times 0.18, plus 4 times 0.08, and then finally 5 times 0.02. Oops, didn't hit that multiplication sign. All right, let's hope I didn't make a typo doing this. When I hit enter, ooh, that's way too high. And why I know that's way too high is because no moms were woken up 5.86 times so I must have a typo in this. Let me see if I can find it. Uh, I can find it right there. I see 4.08, not 4 times 0.08. So I just want to reiterate, I know I have a typo because the average isn't 5.86, right? I thought the average was somewhere in between one and three. And no moms were actually woken up 5.86 times, which is another reason I know I have a typo. All right, so this should have been four times 0.08. All right, that's, that's the number I was looking for. I was looking for 2.1. So let me go ahead and write this here. Now, any statistic has the same units as your variable. So what is this, 2.1 what? 2.1 babies, 2.1 hours after midnight, no, this was 2.1 times woken up after midnight, right? So times, and we'll say times awoken after midnight. So on average, a mom was woken up 2.1 times after midnight. And yes, I agree that no mom can be woken up 0.1 times, but this is still the numerical average. All right, in most cases, the numerical average is not actually a possible number. I used to hear the statistic all the time, you know, the average person has 2.4 kids. Nobody actually has 2.4 kids, but it's still the numerical average. All right, so I wanna point out something. You saw how tricky it was to enter all of this into our calculator. You saw me make a typo. It happens all the time. So I wanna show you a cleaner way of getting this done. So what I'm gonna do, let's go clear out our lists. All right, and let's put our data into our list. So I'm gonna put the values of my variable into L1, and then I wanna put those respective probabilities into L2. So those were 0.04, 0.22, 0.46, 0.18, 0.08, 0.09, 0.10, 0.11, 0.12, 0.13, 0.14, 0.15, 0.16, 0.17, 0.18, 0.19, 0.20, 0.21, 0.22, 0.23
go ahead and crunch one of our stats, L1, L2, and read off the X bar label. Okay? All right, so with that, let's go revisit Nancy, the, the student that was going to class a few times a week. Okay, we're back with Nancy, and we're getting asked to find or to calculate the expected value. Now, expected value, that's another word for mean, which is also another word for average. So I'm going to do this one by hand, just because, and then I want us to try it on our calculators. And for the most part, you'll always do it on your calculators. So if I ever want the expected value, capital E of X, it's a bunch of products that I need to add together. And it's always the value of your variable weighted against its particular probability. So this is 0 times 0 0.01. And then I want to add to it 1 times 0 0.04. And then 2 times it looks like 0 0.15. And then finally 3 times 0 0.80. And when I'm calculating the expected value this way, I'll just typically do it on my calculation screen. So let me clear this out. So we have 0 times 0 0.01 plus 1 times 0 0.04 plus 2 times 0 0.15 plus 3 times 0 0.8. And we're looking at 2.412. And again, I think I made some kind of typo because this is not the number I'm supposed to get. So let's see if we can find it. 0 times 0 0.01, 1 times 0 0.04. And there it is. I can see my second typo. Right. And I, I make these typos all the time. I made it on the last example also. So this should be a plus sign, and there's the number that I should be getting. So I should be getting an expected value of 2.74. Right. And again, we need to think, what are the units in this problem? All right. Was this moms? Was this babies? Was this classes? No, this was, she went to class on average 2.74 days per week, all right? So 2.74 days attending class in a week. All right, so Nance, Nancy usually gets to class three days a week, but there's sometimes when she goes zero, one, or two, which is why it dragged her, her average down a little bit. And so on average, she gets there 2.74 days. And yes, she could either go 0, 1, 2, or 3. There's no way to go 2.74 days. But that's still the numerical average. And you guys saw again where I had trouble doing this on my calculator, at least in this screen. It's just I, I make typos all the time. I find it much easier, let me clear out my lists, to go into my lists, enter the values of my variable in L1, those respective probabilities into L2. And then go back to my home screen and crunch one of our stats, L1, L2. It's just a lot easier. I, I don't make as many typos. All right, so stat calc 1, L1, comma L2. And there's my average. Right? It's just right there, ready for me to use. I'm not entering a bunch of plus signs and multiplication signs and getting things mixed up. So. When it comes to your table problems, if I ever ask you for an expected value or for a mean or for an average, put your stuff into, put your data in L1, probabilities in L2, and read X bar after you crunch one bar stats L1, L2.